welcome back. We take a look at the story behind the story. We're taking a look specifically this time at the murder of Selena Quintanilla and we have the authority on that. Maria Celeste Arrara is here to share all of the information about the investigation, uh, the day that she found out about the news and having to share that news across the world. And in addition, of course, her one her one on one sit down with Yolanda Saldivar. How did this interview happen? Well, it didn't happen from one day to the other, right. that's for sure, because uh, her attorneys, when I first contacted them, when this whole thing started to, to ask for the interview, they said, not today, not tomorrow, not ever are you going to interview her. Not you nor anybody else is going to interview Jolanda Saldivar. That's not happening. Forget about it. Goodbye. Boom. And they hang up on me. Okay. So, you know, that was a kind of a Cut big wall. Right. Cut and clear. Mm -hmm. um, and then so I started to, to, to think hard about all the ways in which I could uh, contact her. So I first tried to do it directly. I sent her a letter, you know, very basic uh, objective letter saying, listen, a lot has been said about what happened. Uh, you haven't spoken to anybody and I think you have a, a right to, to give your version of what happened. And I'm willing to do it in a very respectful manner. And, and please, if you consider giving it to anybody, give it to me. And then I sent her a, a photograph of mine signed because I knew I was going to see her in court. So I wanted to make sure that she identify who I was gotcha. so that she could connect and, and maybe that would help. Smart move. I sm yeah. yeah, it was, it was a carefully uh, thought out move. Right. And, um, and, I, and I'm sure that was that helped some, somewhat because when I first went to court, she I could see her pointing me out to her attorney who I already knew who was a Hispanic attorney that they had and who I had contacted after they hung up on the phone on me. So um, so I realized she knew who I was, and that's a good start. So because, she visually identified yeah, you. So in court. once you, you have that connection visually, you know that, that that you have the upper hand over all the people that she doesn't have that connection with. Back then, you know, everything was so different. Everybody hated Jolanda. She was the most hated person in the world. Right. I could tell you that much. Mm -hmm. That that some journalists started to call her the killer, even though everything pointed like to the fact that she was. Um, so, so that's the, the, the ambience in, this, in which this interview took place. How did you go in there unbiased? I, I mean, I'm, it's easy to say, well, no, you're a journalist. You've got to be professional. Well, I'm, but I'm, that's I always, hard. Because that's the training. That's the training as journalists that we have. And also, when I went in there already, um, there was not a matter of being biased or not. She had been convicted. So she was the, the, the killer. And the questions that I was going to ask were based on facts and evidence that was presented in court right. and that I had gathered. So th the evidence is objective. You know, I was going to ask questions that, that the uh, state attorney wanted to ask. Of course. I was going to become the state attorney in that interview. But what were you feeling being face to face with her? Face to face with a, a convicted murderer? I, I wasn't, she, she's not menacing looking, you know, at all. She's actually, she has a very uh, low, sweet, Kind of Homey like, look, right? kind of like, like I would say, like childish, childish voice. Um, yes, yes. And and so, so no, she's not menacing, and she was actually always very nice. I mean, you just don't lose perspective of of what she did and why you're there. And while I'm there, yeah, mm -hmm. but but um, but no, she was. I, w I was I was nervous that I wanted to ask all the right questions. I was nervous that I didn't want to turn her off being so aggressive that she would retrieve and leave or right. finish the interview abruptly. Um, I was nervous that I wouldn't be strong enough and then the public might think that I'm being a softy or I'm, or I'm befriending her in a way that it will take away my objectivity. So I was balancing all these things. Did you at any point feel frustrated? Because in seeing the interview, there were times where she would almost make up things or speak things that weren't true. Uh, yeah, there, there were moments. Um, I, was, I think that frustration is too, um, too strong of a word because I wasn't frustrated. I was just like taking it back. Like, how can you say that? You know, it, right. it makes no sense. Mm -hmm. it, it, and, and also, I, I realized during the interview that she was uh, in, in, in certain ways, she was very out, out of touch with the reality. And that she believed her own lies. Right. So, so once I realized that that was happening, I asked the questions very thoroughly and very firm, but also in a benign manner, because I realized that you know there were there was a, a few screws missing there. Yeah, yeah. You can you can definitely tell that when you're seeing the interview. Do you actually have said uh, in an interview you said that she's manipulative? Did you? realize it at the moment that she was trying to manipulate you or no. was it looking back no 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 i went into uh, my conversations with her i mean giving her the benefit of the doubt of a regular normal conversation right. um 
she got upset because I said she was manipulative Correct. in an interview. Mm -hmm. And then she didn't want to talk to me anymore, but she was manipulative. And it was through uh, interacting with her that I understood how she probably manipulated Selena because uh, she would lie when, when things, things were not going her way or when she was afraid of doing something or she changed her mind about something, she would lie. And uh, just like she told Selena at one right. point that she had been raped and she said all these things that came out in the trial, um, she told me at one point that, that she had breast cancer, which she didn't. Right. And, 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 and I, I started to realize that she says those things when she wants to divert attention from what's going on for whatever reason. And, um, and I was like, why? why do you have to tell me you have breast cancer? Why? why? What's the point? Right. Um, and she, but she would tend to press buttons to, to try to get you to do what she wanted to do. Now, you've compared the Selena murder trial to the O.J. Simpson trial in mainstream media, right? Yeah. And in many ways, it is. It's, it's the same, I would say. The because same, it got the attention. Exactly. The, the attention. same attention-grabbing uh, headline. But it's very different in the sense that in the O.J. Simpson case, you have the celebrity who's the suspect. Yeah. And in the Selena case, you have the celebrity the who's the victim, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's two completely different ways of, of handling that, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Very different. Um, in this case, the, the accused criminal was a nobody. Right. And in the book and in the miniseries, you really, that I wrote, uh, Selena's Secret, you, you see how she becomes from being a, a nobody, a person who had been bullied and who was not popular and not, uh, not very blessed physically speaking, um, who becomes then the right hand of a superstar and then finds herself like an identity. And then when she's about to lose that identity, then she snaps and that's, it, it, it unravels a series of events that, that you know, ended up with taking Selena's life. Of course. But, but yeah, so, so OJ, everybody knew everything about him. With her, you didn't, nobody knew anything about her. Correct, yeah. correct. Now, you've said that Yolanda won't grant you another interview because of the fact that you've said that she's manipulative. She did yeah. not like that. Yeah, she, 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 she told me in a letter, uh, because when, when it was the 20th anniversary of the murder, I tried to contact her again to do a, uh, an updated interview to see if she had reflected throughout the years, if she saw what happened differently, if she felt any remorse. I just wanted to, to pick her brain and see how this had changed, this story that fascinated me from day one. And she said, absolutely not interview to you. Um, she was very upset. She said, how dare you call me manipulative? You only saw me one time in your life. And, and she's right. I only saw her one time in, her li in, in our lives. But we, we spoke many times on the phone. We corresponded. Uh, we, and, and, and it is during those correspondence and, and many times we had, uh, we agreed on things and then she went back on, you know, things that had to do with interviews and, and, and interviewing people that were close to her. She would just change the, her plans and then lie about why everything got canceled and just things like that, you know? Now you said that you wanted to make sure you went into that interview uh, as, as uh, unbiased and professional as you could and that you obviously wanted to make sure that the audience also wouldn't see you as a softie. How did the audience respond to you? Were they okay with how you handled the interview? I think so. Yeah, they were very, very, uh, very pleased with, with the product and with the way that it was conducted. So much so that the father, Selena's father, who was opposed to me interviewing Yolanda, called me afterwards and requested that I interview him because he wanted to address certain things that Yolanda said. And the first thing that he said was, you know what, I was against you interviewing this woman, this crazy woman, um, and, uh, and, and now I, I think that, that you did a good job and I want to respond to certain things that she said. You see, so yeah. you did your job. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. was, it was good. And, and in, that, in that interview, he, he said a lot of things that were important, in my opinion, about uh, things that they discover and a pattern that they saw on Yolanda's behavior previous to the murder. Right. If Selena were still alive today, where do you think she would be? That is such a hard question because talented she was, very talented. And the album that was a crossover album, Dreaming of You, that came right after she was killed uh, was fantastic. But I don't know if there would have been as much of an audience listening to that album that was so fantastic. That, that remains to... We'll never, know. we'll never know. Now, Yolanda Saldivar is uh, up for parole. She's not going to give me an interview that I tell you. What do you think the outcome will be for the eligibility for parole? I don't know. 2025 because... is less than six years yeah. away, right? Yeah, I, I don't know what the outcome will be. She's had good behavior, and that is a plus for her. Um, but if she comes out, she, she's going to have to change her identity because she is in a lot of danger right. if she comes out under her name and her own identity. 
I think that, that that's something that, that the, the, the authorities are going to take into consideration. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Yeah, I, I don't know if the, the public uh, would be able to handle that, you know, just her being out well, of there's the always a There's always a, a mad person that is going to want to take revenge after all these years, even right. though at that point she would have had, you know, her, she would have done... Uh, her thing to to comply with justice, you right. know. Right. So, is there anything else that you want to add to this? I think the day that this happened, that that thirty first of March of nineteen ninety five, um, we lost a star, but but a legend was born. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for for granting us this chat here on Hollywood Files. I hope you had a good time. I did. I, I think uh -huh. I could sit here and talk to you Me forever too. and ever Me and ever. Me too. This is such a fascinating case, and it's something that that, that we we take very seriously. Even though looking back at it, we can do it at certain points with a smile, but it's very serious, uh, and, and 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 big tragedy what happened. Yeah, and we are fortunate enough that we have, like you said, her legacy, her music that will live on forever. Yes. Thank you so much, Ray Celeste. Thank you. Amigos de YouTube, ya saben, nos conocen bien, somos Latinx Now. Mm -hmm. Y bueno, si quieren seguir viendo este contenido es fácil. Suscríbanse. ¡Oh! ¡Lo, ¡Lo dijo bien! bien! ¡Lo dijo bien! bien! Y ahora sí, suscríbanse, por favor. <risa> si en vez es que suscríbase, suscríbase. Suscríbase. Wait, and turn on post notifications. Ah, también, también, eso es importante. Turn on post notifications. Y suscríbanse. <risa>